read out some Harlan 3. Okay, let's make this our prayer and you know our declaration uh, and our you know our praise before the Lord. Right, um, Psalm 103, the first uh, five verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise the Lord. You know, we have such an awesome God, and uh, and this is what He does. And in response to all that He does. Uh, for all the benefits, for all for forgiveness of all iniquities, for healing of all diseases, uh, for his redemption from destruction, and who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy, satisfies our mouth with good things, and who renews our strength, or renews our youth like the eagles. You know, all that we can do is to to bless him, to bless his name. Right. So let's uh, uh, with this in our hearts, let's uh, let's bless his name. Let's praise the Lord. Right. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you with everything within us, Lord. We come before you and we praise you, Father God. Yes, Lord, with everything within us, we come before you, Lord, and we acknowledge your presence, Father God. Yes, Lord, we we agree, Lord, with the psalmist here and in, in, declaring, in declaring that you are the one, who, Lord, who forgives all our iniquities. You are the one who heals all our diseases, Lord. You are the one who redeems us, O oh God, our life from destruction, Lord. And you're the one who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, Father God. Father God, we thank you that you fill our mouth with good things, Lord, to renew our strength, to renew our youth like the eagles, oh God. We thank you. We thank you for all that you are, Lord, all that you do for us, Lord, and all that, uh, Lord, we are because of you, Master. We thank you. We bless your name. Lord, we give you praise today. And Father, we thank you that you are changing us from the inside out. Lord, we thank you that Lord, you are changing our desires, God. You are changing, oh Lord, our our focus, oh God. You're changing, Lord, everything, Lord, in line with the work of your spirit, oh Father God. We thank you that the work of the flesh is, Lord, um, falling away, Father God. We thank you that it's it's being burnt away, oh Master. We thank you that uh, all things that are fleshly, all things that are not uh, renewed to your word, Lord, everything is falling away, God. And uh, by the work of your spirit, Father God, we thank you. Yes, Lord, your anointing, Father, which uh, which burns away, Father God. We thank you. That is, uh, that's what is happening, O oh Master. And so, God, we we come and yield ourselves, Lord, to you, Father God, this morning. And we say, Lord, have your way in our lives, Lord. Have your way in our lives, O oh Father God. Yes, Lord, there'd be more of your, more of the work of your Spirit, O oh Father God. And uh, we pray, Father God, that it, uh, even as you work in us, and Lord, we are also asked that you would work through us, Father God. Yes, Lord, that um, even as you. Lord, put in our hearts, Lord, godly desires and Lord, uh, and the ability to make godly, Lord, righteous choices. Oh, Father God, I pray that you would work in us and, and through us, Father God, like a mighty river, Lord, um, touching, Lord, other, others' lives, oh, Father God. And uh, yes, Master, to, to make disciples of all nations, Lord, you said. And Father God, we pray that you will teach us, Lord, continue to teach us, continue to make us, Lord, um, into, into, into that kind of a people, Lord, as we follow you. Even as you promised, Lord, we thank you. And uh, yes, Lord, even as we commit this day into your mighty hands, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Um, in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, just a minute. Right. Okay. We'll we'll start off from where we stopped last class um, in discipleship and small groups. We looked at um, I think we, last time we ended by saying you know as um, uh, as a cell group leader, one must be able to uh, one must de or develop the ability to minister the word of the spirit. Right. Uh, and uh, in the sense. Um, yes, the, uh, the cell group leader is a facilitator. Yes, the cell group leader is also um, there to you know, to draw out uh, from people to help guide people. Um, and so, the cell group leader needs to be able to develop or ha should be developing, you know, this ability to minister the word. 
right, to share the word um, and to teach the word of God, and also to uh, you know to to move in the works or according to the leading of the Spirit in ministry, right? To minister the word and the Spirit, you know, whether it's uh, in uh, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or ministering healing and deliverance, and so on. So, uh, and also bringing in timely, you know, godly counsel. Right? So we looked at all that. Um, so personally, um, uh, how can the cell group leader uh, develop further? Like uh, personally, how can they? Uh, you know, what are certain skills and abilities that the cell group leader can focus on? And develop and grow into. Okay, now, um, so so before the, uh, you know, before we even think of that, uh, one needs to have uh, this mindset of learning, of wanting to learn, of wanting to grow continuously. Okay, I think that's that's something that we saw last time also, that one must have a desire to be able to go from one level of learning to another level of learning so not reaching a place of you know or of settling down comfortably you know we're not talking about contentment okay because we know that uh, yes the scripture talks about uh, godliness with contentment is great gain right um so we're not con talking about being discontent but really wanting more you know, there's a difference, right? The wanting more, of uh, wanting wanting to know more, wanting to learn more, wanting to grow. You know, that's um, that should be the the mindset of the cell group leader. Okay, so if that is there, then well, the cell group leader can actually uh, continue to learn, continue to grow, because uh, because it's a scriptural thing, it's a biblical thing of wanting to grow you know wanting to uh learn and grow and because we see in uh, uh this is in um, i think it's the second peter right second peter um the last verse where second peter 3 and verse 18 peter writes and he says but grow in the grace and knowledge okay, grow in the grace and knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ so that should be you know, really the mindset to grow in the grace, to grow in the knowledge. So uh, it doesn't say, you know, you stop after you reach a level, you know, continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? So so also, you know, when it comes to certain skills, and uh, so we're going to look at how can we develop uh, certain functional uh, skills, okay? and what are these skills that we need to uh, develop in, in ourselves and uh, you know if we are going to be raising up leaders then how can we develop that in the lives of others okay, okay. so this is uh, so developing the skills to be a successful cell group leader so that, like we said the first thing is to keeping or keep learning continuously okay so uh, committing to learn now, having that mindset, okay, I, I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to develop these things. And um, what will that involve? That involves, you know, investing a certain amount of time. Right? It requires, um, like like most of you, you know, all of you are doing, you know, you're, um, some of you are working, some of you are serving, but you're investing time and effort in order to grow even more, right? Uh, and, and that's why you enrolled. Um, in, in the Bible College, right? So you you might be, you know, you 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 have your maybe your work, you have maybe your ministry, but then you want to grow further in it, right? So that's the thing. So to be able to invest time and effort, okay, it's not just a matter of saying, okay, from this time to this time in the day I will do this, but you know that it requires effort, right? You know that it requires additional effort because. Um, whatever learning you know uh, that you are enrolled in uh, requires certain things to do certain things to submit and certain things to you know to know and so on so it requires effort as well not just the time okay 
Okay, so here are um, you know, Proverbs 1, 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So, um, so this is what we see uh, in Proverbs. Okay, so five steps to establish a cycle of continuous learning or five steps to, uh, to work at so that, uh, you know, there can be a process of continuous learning. What is that? Okay, first thing is to focus on priorities. Okay, so the first word is focus. Okay, uh, focus. Uh, you know, it's the acronym first F I R S T. Okay, so we focus on. I mean, we look at the first letter uh, F, um, and the word is focus. Focus on priorities. What is important? What is um, you know what are those things that are critical, and what is it that we need to reach for? Okay, what is that objective that we are going towards? So focus on that. Okay, so when we say focus, focus means to to look at something intently, um, to to observe something, to to to, to examine something uh, intently. Um, but at the same time, you're not being distracted by other things. Okay, so to the exclusion of everything else. So that is focus. Right. I'm sure if you, you know, in your cameras, in your phone cameras, if you're focusing on something, um, the other things blur out, right? The background blurs out, right? Because you're focusing on a particular object in the foreground, right? You're in the forefront, you're just focusing on it. So the background could, you know, their focus is not on the background. Your focus is not on anything else that is surrounding it, but on that one object. So what happens is that other things lose focus. Now that's that happens. Like you know, so here are some things that you're going to be focusing on. So these are priorities. The other things would lose focus. You can't focus on. Uh, you can't give uh, something else has to take a lower priority. Right? That's that's a given. Uh, uh, so we need to understand that. Okay, so focus on priority. Second one, implement something every day. Okay, so implement. Do, uh, you know, maybe you've learned something. Maybe you've, uh, uh, you know, you're, you've learned some skill. Put it to practice. And maybe it, it'll involve stepping out of what is familiar, what is comfortable for us. So maybe it requires some additional effort. Right, so implement it, do it, try it out, carry it out. Okay, now, um, now John C. Maxwell, you know, he, uh, we know, he's written some lot of books on leadership, and uh, he he talks about how, you know, uh, he, he he writes a lot of books, right, and he says that every day, he he makes sure that he writes something. Okay. So it doesn't wait for one day and then start writing, you know, about a particular subject or whatever. You know, um, the book that he's books that are that he's writing. So he every day it, it could be he says you know it could be even a line, it could be even a phrase, a paragraph. You know, the the quantum of it or the size of it. Um, he says it doesn't matter, but he needs to do something every day. He needs to sit down and implement it. He needs to do that. So, so he says, okay, you you need to do that every day, right? Um, so that's that's the second thing. Okay, if you are going to be learning continuously, um, you know, we need to be able to do something. You know, whatever we've learned, whatever skill, or maybe we need to practice something. Uh, do it every day, right? Implement something every day. Third thing is to reflect. Okay, to re what does it mean to reflect? To reflect means to to think about, to review. Right? Okay, uh, maybe something that you've uh, maybe you've given us. Maybe you shared. You know, you preached a sermon. To reflect means to look back at at that message or at that sermon to see what could I have done better. You know, what was lacking? What could I have done better? What went right? Right. What uh, 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 what was good about it? What went right? So so you looking back, 
you're thinking about it and you're learning from it right you're looking back at a particular event something that you did something that you did not do even looking back and learning from it okay so we are learning from that also right so when you focus when you do something every day when we implement it every day when we look back when we reflect on it so you're spending some time just thinking about it okay this is how i spoke or this is how i sang or this is how i led right and uh, you're going over it and saying okay you know uh, folk, i mean uh, looking at it and saying okay what could i have done uh, better how can i better that right so so there is some learning that is happening we are also we are, you know and uh, the learning is uh, it could be okay how what what i should not do the next time right what i should do differently right and uh, uh, so this there could be so much of learning when we just reflect uh, on on certain things right okay then the other thing is uh, to seek feedback and support okay so others perspectives it's it's like quite important and uh, from that also we can learn right because we might think according to our our way of thinking our way of seeing things uh, we might think okay everything is fine you know this 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 is this is great um and uh, and we might miss out on certain things you know when we um let's say you know maybe if it's something to do with songs something to do with uh, music um you know when when I and mean, this is something that we we try to do right uh, like singing that song a new song maybe uh, singing a new song that, that the team has written or team has put together um trying it out in church and if we are very very you know after a couple of times and we are very sure that okay this is something that needs to be recorded if this is something that needs to be uh, you know made a video of um, then we also get feedback from the people who have heard it saying okay uh, what did you like about it you know what what helped what did it help you know did it help you uh worship the lord was it distracting right in what way did it help and we've seen that some interesting feedback we get right people come back saying you know this was this is not good or this is very monotonous you know we need to change that um and and also some positive things you know, a lot of positive things saying okay this is this was great it's it's good as it is you know it helped me uh, focus and just worship the lord it helped me to have a conversation with god and so on so so this feedback helps right so we can learn uh, from others ideas and of course we need to know that okay if it's a sincere feedback right uh, you know we can really take it like even if it's critical right even if it's something negative if it's a sincere feedback and if people have you know if it's an objective feedback then it's then it's great um but if not if it is insincere if it is just an attack on you know on uh, on people then then we can discard it right but uh, but a sincere critical feedback is always valuable okay so then uh, the letter t you know f i r s t so transfer the learning okay so now how can i you know how can i whatever i've learned how can i do this how can i carry it out uh, how can i try it out right so you transfer the learning into the next steps and uh, and then we plan for you know continue how can i continue to learn right so so these will help us uh, these are just five letters right if i r s t focus implement reflect seek feedback transfer learning so this will help us to um to for the cell leader to go into continuous learning or to continue on the process of learning continuously right and this is quite important so we can you know for us personally this is for us to implement or this is for us to try out um and uh, secondly this is something that we can uh, this is something that we can teach our cell group leaders also 
you know, someone who is being groomed to be a leader, um, you know, if you identify, you know, that's one of the, uh, and that's one of the things that the leader does, right? Identify other leaders. So this can be uh, taught, right? Okay, why don't you do this? You know, these five things um, so that you are also learning continuously, right? And you're also growing continuously. So these are some things, right, to do, okay? So here are some specific skills that a cell group leader will need. Now, this is apart from the ability to, you know, to share the word, the ability to minister in the things of the spirit, right? This is apart from that, some, some basic skills. Okay, what is that? Uh, firstly, the ability to organize a cell meeting, right? the ability to organize and coordinate, you know, so there are several things required, right? You need to be able to contact people. You need to schedule um, the day and time, date, day and time. You need to inform people well in advance um, that this is the thing. Or to set a process where you're saying, okay, every Wednesday we are meeting, every Tuesday we are meeting. And if something is happening, uh, you know, on that day where you're unable to meet, then to inform the group. So... So those basic things, you know, these are these are some things that we do normally, but um, you know, this is this is something that needs to be there, right? To to organize, to coordinate, to communicate, right? Um, secondly, doing regular follow up. Okay, so it's not just to have the meeting, but also to follow up and to find out. You know, like we said, one of the things is to is to be in touch with the cell group members apart from meetings, right? The meeting happens once a week or maybe once in two weeks, but is the cell group leader in touch with the other, with the others uh, apart from the meeting, meeting time, okay? Um, yes, we all have you know, constraints on time, but now, you know, we can do it because of, you know, because of WhatsApp, because of email, uh, so many things, right? So we, we don't have to necessarily call and talk to people, but just to keep in touch, um, you know, uh, during the, or between two meetings, or the time between two meetings, you know, uh, you can keep in touch, right? Okay. The third thing is to work with the a leadership. You know, there could be a cell pastor, there could be another, you know, overseer to 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 work with, right? Not to work against but to work with, um, you know, that kind of, a, uh, you know, to have that relationship, right? Then to network up with other cell leaders, you know, there could be other cell groups to to work with them, to find out what they are doing and, and learn from that, uh, to pray, you know, for their challenges and so much, so much, so many things. So this person should not be just, you know, closed. And um, and not interacting with others, the person should not be that way. The cell group leader should not be that way. Okay, okay. So here are some other people and relationship skills. See, we know we know that ministry is about people. You no, know? ministry we know is serving, and who are we serving? It's serving the people who belong to God, like the flock of God. That is what we saw, that we are made as overseers of the flock of God. Right? That is what Peter writes um, in First Peter chapter 5. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you. So um, people, we need to understand, you know, ministry is not about not interacting with people. Right? Some of us are, uh, well, we, we, you know, we have that as part of our temperament. Right, we we like spending time with people. We like talking to people. We like meeting people. Okay, some of us are like that, and some of us are not like that. Right, we 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 might be very sincere. We might be, uh, you know, uh, good believers, and uh, you know, we want to help people. We want to serve the Lord in, in in various ways. But when it comes to people, you know, we are. I mean, we don't necessarily feel that way you know we don't feel like being with people we want to you know maybe run away from people you know stay away from people okay now that could be challenging because as a cell group leader and as someone who wants to serve 
in ministry. We, we need to have, you know, there will be people. So we need to understand that, right? And, uh, and make changes, right? Just, just one second. So we need to understand that, yeah, ministry is about people. Ministry is about serving. Settle it in our mind. Settle it in our heart. Okay. Secondly, develop a liking for people. Okay. Now we know that people, there are different kinds of people, mature, immature, irritating, <laughs> right? Uh, good, noble, kind people. So all kinds of people, but we need to have God's heart when it comes to people. What is God's heart? Right, um, and we can pray and ask the Lord, Lord, you give me your heart. You know, what is it that you feel for people? Right, what is it that you you see in people, and especially this group of people that that I'm dealing with, that I'm leading, that you've placed me, Lord. What is how do you see them? You know, what is it that you feel for them? What is it that you see in them, Lord? I want to see the same thing. I want to feel the same thing in my heart. Right. So then, what happens is we we uh, what develops is in our heart the heart that God has, the heart that the Lord Jesus has for the very same people, and that changes us. You know, maybe we are hurt by some of the things that they've said and done. Maybe we are, you know, we are irritated by some of their mannerisms and behaviors, and you know, and many times maybe you've. Um, you know, you've helped them and you've uh, corrected them and yet they make the same mistake, right? And you get so discouraged and you get saying, you know, when will they ever change, right? But if we would get God's perspective, then we would actually get to like people, right? Despite uh, all their failings and all their limitations. Right? Okay, the other thing is... The, uh, to you know, if we, if at all, we have fear of meeting people or being with people, you know, some, some, some have the fear. No, like I don't know what to say to them. Like, I don't know if anybody's had that kind of a thing. I don't know what I will you know, if I have to meet them. Uh, okay, I will teach them the word, and you know, we'll. But after that time or before that time, I don't know what to say to them. Right? I don't know what I will like talk to them about. I don't know, right? So uh, maybe the, then there's a fear, and right? okay, because I don't know what I what to say, what to talk. Uh, I don't want to meet, right? So we need to deal with that fear, the fear of meeting people, and uh, and the best way to do that is to get interested, you know, ask questions, asking questions, okay, uh, you know, where do you live, what do you do, and uh, how was your week. And so asking questions is a is a great way of getting over that fear of meeting people, you know, or even getting over that fear of what will I say, what will I talk to them about? You know, because you're if you're genuinely interested, uh, then you will have, you know, you will ask questions and and even as we do that, you know, you will lose your fear <clears throat> of okay. There will be something to talk about. There will be something to share from your own life. So um, you lose the fear of meeting people, right? Okay. So uh, one way of doing it is to intentionally meet and say, okay, today I'm going to meet. Um, maybe in church, I'm going to meet with some new people. Right? Welcome them and uh, tell them about the life group. Right. So intentionally, proactively meet. Um, this is what Proverbs 18.24 says. A man who has friends must him show himself to be friendly. <clears throat> yeah. So so that's the thing that that if if I need to be friends with people, then I must be friendly. Okay. So so that's that's a, that's an instruction, that's a word of wisdom there. And also be sensitive to people. Okay. Um, their background, their culture, their upbringing. Um, so be sensitive to that. Be um, be wise in that, um, because uh, you know maybe their culture is different from your culture, right? So because of that, you know you feel a little you know, discomfort. Maybe the you know maybe the language is different. Maybe the culture is different. Maybe the way they you know everything, whatever they experience, why they were growing up. Uh, maybe. 
they were not fortunate enough to have the same kind of you know maybe good experience that you had uh, or uh, you know it was different for them so be sensitive to that right uh, so being sensitive meaning you know you you understand okay they are they are different in their upbringing so therefore their behavior and understanding of things is is different so you know it will enable us to be a little more patient right so be sensitive now, being kind courteous and wise uh, without becoming compromising so we're not compromising on truth we're not compromising on values but at the same time we are you know displaying the kindness um, and the goodness and being courteous and and being wise right okay and if there are any personality weaknesses something like this you know like these insecurities uh maybe you know some people feel very insecure you know they don't feel confident um when they meet with people who are very successful in life right uh, in the sense we learn that okay we find out that they are uh, very successful very very learned maybe very successful uh, and maybe even more experienced than we are then uh, what happens is that we feel a little nervous, right? Nervous and a little insecure, sometimes fearful, and we really don't want to meet them. You know, if they don't come for the cell group meeting, then we are happy. <laughs> you know, it's like that. We don't, we don't really want to meet with them or interact with them uh, because they make us feel a little less confident. Okay? Now, those are things that we need to overcome. Right. No matter how successful they are, no matter how you know experienced they are, or no matter how gifted people are, right? it doesn't matter. Right? It just means that uh, you praise God for their lives. Oh, wow! God has really blessed them, and uh, it's wonderful that God, you know, there's someone who, with, with all this learning, with all this experience, with all this gifting, and someone who has you know, uh, put it to good use and accomplished so much in life. So you just give thanks to God for that. Okay, then you realize that, okay, all these discomfort uh, of meeting them or being with them, you know, all that will go away, right? So there could be some personality weaknesses on our side, on our part, when it comes to, you know, or maybe it could be the other way, you know, <laughs> like, uh, looking at everyone, looking down on everyone and saying, okay, they are not learned enough like me, okay. or they're not skillful like me, or they're not experienced like me, they're not mature like me. Okay. So those are certain, you know, weaknesses, or maybe, you know, some people are very, very impatient, or maybe they get angry, very short tempered, you know, all those things need to be overcome you know, to be a good cell group leader. Right, so we need to overcome that. Like, um, so renew our mind to the truth of God's word. Allow the Holy Spirit. Uh, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to produce in us the fruit of the Spirit. Right. So there's there's maturity, there's completeness. And uh, you know all the good things that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives is uh, is there, and the fruit remains, right? So, um, so these are some things that we need to deal with. Okay, um, a few thoughts here, more on people. Okay, uh, this is from Million Leaders Magazine, John John Maxwell's book. Okay, it says that a leader's most important asset is people skills. Okay, so dealing with people, leading people, communicating with people, uh, even correcting people, right? uh, resolving conflicts. Now, all this doesn't happen in one day, right? We know that it doesn't happen in one day. It doesn't even happen in a very short span of time. No, it, it takes time. Like we, we grow, uh, maybe we grow a little, and then we have a little bit of skills in all these areas um, in resolving conflicts of people in uh, you know in 
understanding people and relating to people in communication with people we we learn a certain you know we are we arrive at a certain level of skill right and and continue to grow in that okay understand that it doesn't happen in one day because if we if we are expecting that oh i in one day i need to be like this right in tomorrow i need to be like this then we are we'll be frustrated right we, we when we realize that okay i've not grown as much as i expected it to be expected to be then we get very frustrated with ourselves right? we get very impatient with ourselves now so you, you need to we need to give ourselves time and understand that you know a leader's uh, uh, skill or a uh, very important thing is people skills so give time for that right a good leader can lead various groups because leadership is about people okay and you can have people skills and not be a good leader now that's something that we need to understand now uh, we can have just people skills uh you know ability to relate to people and you know uh, being able to communicate with people etc and not be a good leader okay now that's possible but one cannot be a good leader without people skills okay there's a that's a difference right i can have all kinds of people skills and and still not be a good leader because of certain things like maybe my decision making ability or my competence level you know all these things might affect me by, from being a good leader fine but i cannot be a good leader if i do not have people skills because it is about people it was about influencing people it's about leading people leadership therefore i need to have good people skills okay so and and uh, finally leadership is relationships okay okay here are some uh, you know we'll quickly go through this here are some thoughts you know people are in you know in the sense these are needs challenges uh wants of people okay so here's what a, a, lead, a good leader can do okay here's what a good leader can bring in to the lives of people okay see these are these are again needs weaknesses challenges faced by people okay people are insecure give them confidence okay people like to feel special honor them people look for a better tomorrow give them hope people need to be understood listen to them people lack direction navigate for them or give them uh, you know direction people are needy speak to their needs first people get emotionally low encourage them people want to succeed help them when people desire relationships provide community people seek models or examples to follow be an example okay so we see that okay these are this could be these are needs of people these are challenges that people face so so as good as good leaders you know we can help them in this manner so to when we look at a cell group when we look at people in the cell group we know that okay they could be having these kind of things you know these kind of needs these kind of challenges and um, you know we're not doing it in a very humanistic way but we are doing it from the word of god right as we minister as we share as we study the word of god by the help of the holy spirit with the help of the holy spirit then we see that all these needs all these changes beginning to happen okay so expect the expect that change pray for that change and uh, and you know minister to people right okay the other thing is to develop some amount of or some level of counseling skills Okay. now the importance of this is that you know as you're you know interacting with people uh, and typically in a in a small group or a, you know in a cell group kind of a setting a setting sorry um, there always you know there are some needs there are some uh, challenges that people are facing some problems that people are facing and they you know um, most likely they will bring it or share with the cell group leader or in the cell group 
okay so it's important that we as cell group leaders um, develop some level of counseling skills okay so so here are some of them and i'm sure you've you know you're going through um, or uh, you would have gone through you know christian counseling and and that goes into a lot more depth and detail but here are some basic things to think about you know the art of listening right um, very basic i think we looked at it last semester also when we were looking at uh, um you know um skills right um, the skills course um so listening without interrupting listening without jumping to conclusions is uh, is very important okay the second thing is not only just listening but asking questions okay when you ask the right kind of questions you get to understand the person you get to under know more about the person and more importantly we can get to understand why is this problem in this person's life okay why is this per why is this problem happening or why is this you know re problem recurring over and over again right is it spiritual in nature or is this person somehow contributing to the problem right uh, are they by their action by some of their choices are they actually you know making the problem worse for themselves so how do we know that right we need to ask questions we need to ask the right questions and then based on the response you find out yes you know if they're saying okay i'm doing everything right but still i have this problem then we need to ask you know okay so um when was the when was the first time you had this kind of a problem right um how what happened how did it happen um then they so just like you know how a doctor would ask questions like simply you know you say okay doctor there's pain you know the doctor will say okay when did it start when did you first have it uh what did you eat um you know what did you what did you do that was different from all the other days because of which now you know you have this so um so this kind of you know thing so develop that ability right um build confidence and hope in the person now that's very very important now the thing is that person has problems they have these challenges um the best thing that we can do is build confidence that yes you can face this challenge and come through okay and this confidence is not not just on people's ability but in god's ability to to solve that god's ability the lord's uh, based on his word and promises that his ability to come through his his ability to uh you, you know to be there and solve this his ability to, ability to redeem the situation so give confidence and hope based on that no it's not based on assumptions you know it's not like um, no everything will be fine don't worry it's not that kind of a uh you know scenario it's not that kind of a statement that we said you know there's there needs to be proof why we are saying that and it's because okay this is who god is right? it is because you know if you do this and if you stand strong and if you continue to make some wise choices um well well god is with you god is uh you know for you and he will help you through right so uh, give the person hope okay uh, because a lot of times people give up hope okay there is they are hopeless they don't they have come to that place of maybe trying failing um unable to solve because of you know continuous failures and and they've lost all hope right so give them hope right? and hope not based on uh, you know something uh something that is you know that is not strong or foundational but hope based on who god is hope based on what god can do for them what the lord can do for them hope based on on his word his promises and now that's a hope that is strong that's a you know expectation um that is strong okay so have the word as a foundation on which you can base your hope right 
So build that, give them that, okay, that it's not beyond redemption. Okay, the situation is not beyond redemption. Yes, uh, you know, certain times it depends on the, you know, it's not just, just this person, right? It Maybe it involves another person, you know, like maybe in situations like marriage or, uh, you know, even parents, parenting, you know, the parent-child relationship or it involves the will of the other person, right? Okay, I can do everything right. But also the other person has to respond now, okay? And the, and the situation will change only when that person responds positively, okay? Uh, that person has to say, okay, I'm willing to work through. No, it, it involves their will. It involves their choice, right? So even in that scenario, that, that circumstance is, you know, in such a, a circumstance, you can give them hope saying, okay, let God work on their heart. Now you do everything what's possible from your side, but let now here are some things that you cannot control, right? That is fine. But let God work on their heart and you know, so give them that confidence and hope. Okay. Okay, we'll stop here and then we'll come back at 10 uh, in 10 minutes and then we'll continue. Right? Okay, maybe if there are questions, we can have questions also.